we have this connection to to the sky but what does that then really mean um, <laughs> what is, why this preoccupation with the stars and uh, the way this is explained in, in Vedic astrology is that um, the planets in particular uh, they are kind of like the hands on the face of a clock so it's not that the planets themselves uh, in some way create problems for us but it's more like they are these indicators of certain flavors certain kinds of um, of well a certain quality of time actually the deeper you go into this the more you see it um, as a major preoccupation something that was very important to to our ancestors to some to, to such an extent that I think you can even uh, make the argument that uh, if there is something like a common human spirituality uh, that is very ancient and very old then definitely it has something to do with astrology uh, it, it, yeah there's really <laughs> no no two ways about it time um, time has a, has a kind of a quality to it so the idea is that the moment of birth and now we're of course moving more towards <laughs> uh, using astrology to in some way decode our destiny uh, that the the moment of our birth if we could read those hands <laughs> on on the cosmic dial we would be able to get a sense of the quality of time that uh, that's kind of imprinted on us as individuals and uh, this then is exactly what astrology offers us um, well I guess one way to decode your destiny because it tells us the it tells us something about the qualities uh, that come with us into this life now of course we can to some degree decide whether or not we're going to lean into those qualities it's not that we are necessarily mere puppets of that um, of those original impulses so essentially then yeah these um, the positions of the planets and uh, specifically uh, the visible planets that would be the ones that would feature more prominently in classical astrology they then become these very important indicators of the different qualities of time so uh, maybe we can uh, briefly introduce them to you so the sun of course we're usually aware of our sun sign uh, now the sun is known as the king of the planets uh, and that rhymes to some degree with modern astronomy because the sun kind of keeps our solar system together so even from a contemporary perspective we can consider that the sun is very important it's central to this solar system so that's very important then also then in our individual birth charts you could say so the birth chart really is nothing um, but uh, a schematic uh, you could say of these different positions at the time of birth and the position of the Sun then tells us about where a person's vitality and strength comes from so that's there so everyone has uh, well the Sun would have been somewhere at the time of a person's birth um, you may be born uh, say around 12 o'clock uh, during the day and then the Sun will be high up in the sky and that's obviously then also an indicator that the person's vitality and strength will be prominent and visible you may also be born at a time when the Sun is almost invisible so say like around midnight you can't see the Sun the Sun is actually beneath the earth at that time so uh, you would then expect that a person's energy and vitality is more like hidden it's not so prominent even their 
their sense of authority is perhaps something that plays out more behind the scenes and in the open and in the public. And then of course we have Mercury, um, the communicator of the zodiac. So again, the position of um, Mercury will tell us something about how a person communicates. And as we go through these archetypes, you may be able to notice that there's a lot of overlap between uh, the, the classic Vedic ideas and um, the Greek ideas, Greek and Roman ideas. And that is because uh, there was significant contact uh, between the two cultures. And some of the first major astrology texts were actually written by Greeks and translated into Sanskrit. So that's um, <laughs> quite interesting. Um, but um, in both these traditions, and of course Mercury is famous as this, uh, this communicator, Hermes, and then in Vedic astrology also, uh, has to do with communication. So depending on where that arm on the cosmic dial is, the arm of Mercury, um, that will tell us something about how a person communicates, not just to other people, but also how they tend to speak to themselves inside. So it's quite interesting. And then, of course, uh, there is Venus. And Venus, um, just like in the West, Aphrodite connected to love and affection. In, in the Vedic system, it's similar, but um, with a little bit more detail. Venus tells us about how a person is nourished emotionally. Uh, so wherever Venus is in the chart, that will give us a sense of what nourishes a person um, aesthetically. How, what do they find beautiful? We all need something. Uh, we all need beauty to, differ, to a different extent. Um, and then uh, we have Mars. Mars is associated with what archetype would you say? Yeah, the god of war. So Mars, so we all have an inner warrior, you could say. And the position of Mars at the time of birth gives us a sense of the condition of that warrior. What kind of warrior is it? Is the warrior that likes to take on challenges behind the scenes or is perhaps very very upfront <laughs> and um, where we like to take chances and be brave you could say so Mars uh, gives us an indication of that and then of course uh, Jupiter Jupiter and you know we even have a lot of artifacts in English that that uh, refer back to the planets like um, well jovial comes from Jupiter and a person with a jovial personality will be kind of joyful and blissful uh, so we all have Jupiter somewhere <laughs> uh, at the time of birth and um, it, Jupiter tells us about what gives us meaning and purpose so you can get a, an indication looking at the birth chart where a person is likely to find meaning and purpose in popular contemporary astrology jupiter is sometimes likened to the planet of abundance <laughs> and it's true to some extent that if you do what gives the, you purpose and if it makes you happy then you will also likely be able to gather abundance in that area of life and then there is Saturn and Saturn in especially in Old English had this uh, well we have this term uh, uh, to be Saturnine and um, Saturn has a bit of a heavy energy and uh, where Saturn is in the chart it tells us about where we need to work it's almost like our cross uh, the cross that we need to carry in this life and again it's there somewhere in the chart <laughs> for all of us um, it may be in the area related to children or it may be in the area related to partnerships or even our own personality but it's, it's an area where we will likely face struggle but uh, that's also where our greatest rewards come from 
Saturn plays the long game and uh, very often the, the challenges that Saturn creates or seem to create or indicate when we are younger we later find are actually uh, very important to mature us. Uh, so um, I haven't touched on the moon yet and of course the sun and the moon are not seen as planets in uh, in contemporary cosmology um, uh, but uh, they form part of uh, this ancient system so uh, the moon being closest to the earth uh, tells us about uh, the mind and personality the moon in Vedic astrology is very very important a much more important in a certain sense than, than the sun, the placement of the sun. Uh, because think about it like this, the sun stays in one sign for about 30 days. So 30 people um, over the course of 30 days will all have the same <coughs> sun sign. But the moon uh, changes sign about every day. So, um, so there's a lot more variance there. So, we, um, of course, and all of these um, uh, come together to give us an image of an individual. Um, I think it's very unproductive and uninsightful to put people in, in boxes just based on their sun signs. Um, as if all Virgos are the same <laughs> or all uh, Libras or whatever the case may be. Um, especially then because the moon is so much more uh, significant when it comes to uh, indicating the nature of the personality. So reading these signs then as they stand at the time of birth can give one a sense then of how all these faculties work together. Um, the sun tells us about a person's confidence and vitality so how how strong is that where does it naturally flow um, and then the moon but what is their personality like what kind of person are they um, and then in addition to all of these there is another very important point in every Vedic astrology chart but also um, Hellenistic chart so the system used by the ancient Greeks and Romans and that would be so-called ascendant point ascendant point is very very important so it's the sign that was on the eastern horizon at the time of birth so east is around there <laughs> so if unfortunately we can't see the stars now because the sun is out but um, as soon as the sun sets in the west we'll be able to see a, a constellation on that side um, it will likely be Pisces by the time the sun sets, I think, <laughs> for this time of year. Um, and uh, this, uh, this thing would be the ascendant. So I, I think around now it should be like Pisces time. So um, the ascendant thing is very important it, because it tells us about the physical self of, of a person. So their physical body, and this is then where medical astrology comes in. and. Um, it, it really grounds the chart and really makes it very personal. The ascendant sign changes every two hours. So that is way more specific than the sun and the moon sign. So uh, there is this idea then, and this of course uh, aligns very well with the classic Indian um, ideas about um, us as um, not only gross physical bodies but also subtle bodies and causal bodies we find then that the ascendant relates to the physical body the so-called stula sharira and then um, the moon sign relates to the subtle body the sukshma sharira and um, the sun sign to the causal body the karana sharira or the, the buddhi I'm sure if you've been around uh, some of these <laughs> texts like the Bhagavad Gita you must have heard of the Buddhi this faculty of discrimination so they so all the way from the gross physical to the more subtle uh, we can get a sense of a person's 
qualities. But now, of course, we can decide to some degree what we want to lean into. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're not entirely bound by these qualities we're born with, especially if we can, through the practice of some kind of mindfulness or yoga or uh, self-understanding, come to that realization. Um, yeah, at times uh, this has become quite uh, an important question of debate. There's this um, this verse, uh, and I, I think you must have heard. Uh, uh, it, it's from um, Saint Paul in the Bible, where where he says, "Our our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the the principalities." So that's that's so interesting. Uh, because uh, the, the Greek term there for these these principalities, or in Afrikaans, the, it's translated the geeste and the lucht, so the spirits in the sky. But uh, the Greek term is archon, and uh, the archons were nothing but these planetary deities, like Jupiter, Venus, Mars. And uh, in certain circles, there was this idea that we are captive. Uh, we're, 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 we're under hostage in a certain sense. Um, we're, we're being kept captive by these forces. And, um, we, we have to act out our karma. But that's not entirely true. Because uh, we can choose to, to some extent. Especially the more awareness we develop. And I think that's where Vedic astrology or astrology in general can be very insightful, you know, to get a, a, a picture, maybe something like an, a sense of the energetic profile of, um, of us as individuals. Like, am I perhaps kind of hot-tempered, so maybe I should take note of that and I, I shouldn't be so irritable and impulsive, or uh, perhaps Venus is much more prominent in, in my chart and I'm um, very sensual and um, very go with the flow and perhaps I should um, bring that to bring that into balance uh, to some extent it's also the uh, the air element so we can be very airy <laughs> so lost in ideas and uh, it can be difficult to to execute and put those ideas um, into action so that's when um, uh, the air archetype uh, dominates. Uh, so, yeah, to kind of bring things into balance, that's certainly also possible uh, using uh, the insights uh, of Vedic astrology. And then, yeah, perhaps just a, 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 a brief consideration of the different kinds of astrology used classically. So this. The, the, this, there are quite a few branches, so uh, we did touch on, on medical astrology that is still practiced in India to this day, certain Ayurvedic clinics so where traditional Indian medicine is practiced, they will draw up a chart at the time of admission to get a sense of uh, the possible course of a disease. Um, there is Prashna astrology or horary astrology as it's known in English. This is one of my favorite forms uh, because a Prashna is a Sanskrit term that means question. So you can ask a question. You can ask a question about anything. Uh, for example, what would be the result of investing a hundred thousand rands in platinum this week? And then you can get a sense how it will likely transpire. Um, but yeah, a very versatile form of astrology because you can use it for anything really, like what would be the result of moving to Mpumalanga? <laughs> uh, what would be the result of um, going into business with this and this person? So uh, Prashna astrology, um, very versatile. Birth chart astrology, of course, to get a sense of the energetics that make up our personality and character and maybe get a sense of the big life chapters that's another uh, um, contribution uh, from the birth chart to get a sense of how one, the life chapters 
what planetary archetype will dominate at a certain time. And uh, then um, synastry astrology, where we match charts. So this is of course very useful if you're uh, getting involved with someone, especially in a relationship, to understand how your individual karma come together. How does it blend? Does it blend well or <laughs> does it blend in a problematic way that will be difficult to manage over time? So uh, one can get a sense of that uh, using uh, synastry astrology. Uh, then there is so-called Mahuta astrology or elective astrology and this is uh, a set of techniques that we use to determine the best time to do something. So like for example you want to open a restaurant or you want to start a music festival, you want to open business, you want to sue someone, <laughs> you want to take revenge, whatever you need to do. <laughs> How to line that up, you could say, with um, the cosmic rhythm, the cosmic season, so that it, um, it brings you as much success as is possible. Uh, you'll see as the moon becomes fuller and fuller that people become more charged and they want to express themselves and they want to they kind of come out of their shell and tomorrow of course new moon so there is a bit of a <laughs> you know there's a, a, a maybe energy can feel a bit low um, so yeah it, it is it is uncanny you know so you can uh, using electional astrology you can use uh, you can find a time that suits uh, your purposes uh, perfectly or as <laughs> as good as as available usually <laughs> there are only about two days a month that seem to be good for <laughs> you know like really good for a particular activity so uh, so it's not that easy to find um, uh, a, a good date um, but uh, yeah those are are the major branches of astrology now you, you <laughs> asked can we change it can, can we change our karma and we certainly can to an extent um, of course there are kinds of karma uh, that are difficult to change there are things that are difficult to change but if you can understand the mentality that created the problem in the first place that the the bad karma, the difficult karma that um, that shows up in the birth chart, then you can certainly take steps to cultivate the kind of qualities that counteract that. So, uh, for example, you can uh, you can find uh, in in certain charts that say Mars isn't that strong, so it's difficult for a person to remain focused and to um, finish what they start or even to find this, the energy to start something. <laughs> um, so, um, and this is very interesting, the five planets, um, so not the sun and the moon, for almost every challenge we experience in life, there is usually a, a, an elemental answer, like bringing in more earth, for example, so someone who's kind of lost in ideas <laughs> to bring them down to earth uh, cultivating or invoking connecting to the earth element in some way can can be highly beneficial if a person has difficulty in relationships it's very often the water element that is in some way uh, negatively affected it may may have dried up a little bit or it may be very hot <laughs> so there are ways to um, to address that and um, when it comes to these these different techniques of adjusting things that would be the realm of upaya so that's the sanskrit term for these so-called remedial measures it's big business in india and it has been big business for centuries uh, the brahmanas, the priests would do these different rituals and um, I think those rituals have value to some extent but ultimately you need to change 
the qualities in yourself that created uh, that karma, that pattern to begin with. So, yeah, it may be well worth focusing more on techniques that that shift one's own awareness and understanding, rather than trying to outsource it to someone else. I've seen it doesn't it doesn't work so well. <laughs> um, yeah, outsourcing these things. So yeah, these are some some ideas about Vedic astrology. Um,